Tom Deere on Mind, Body and Soul, The Desert Blooms with Health. Are coffee beans beneficial or just plain bad? And martial arts Bruce Lee style. But first, a smashing solution to stress and anger. Feeling frazzled? Need to de-stress? Some people prefer a nice relaxing massage or meditation, but not the Spanish. They're paying 40 euros a pop to grab a sledgehammer and smash their stress away. Damage therapy is all the rage in Spain. Frustrated businessmen can be spied in scrapyards, hoeing into defunct technology with all sorts of implements. Mobile phones, computers and cars cop it as they're smashed to smithereens with sledgehammers, feet and whatever the stressy can lay his or her hands on. Stop Stress, the company who started the initiative, say that when people first come to the smashing sessions, they are timid and shy. But after a bit of encouragement and revving up, they start to have a smashing good time and come away feeling worry-free and relaxed. Stop Stress managers hope people will stop and think, hmm, I have to pay to beat up a car to make myself feel better. Maybe I should review my work situation. Stop Stress says that people can smash away for up to two hours, but most people start to feel better after about 30 minutes of letting loose. One satisfied customer destroyed a car, paying particular attention to the windows, the bonnet, the trunk, in fact, all the parts of the car that have given her hell in the past. She felt calm and peaceful after taking her revenge. Revenge is the last thing on the minds of these people at the London Planetarium. Stress busting is a much calmer affair for these Brits. They're meditating their stress away by watching a series of relaxing images on the Planetarium Dome. It's a guided meditation accompanied by music and incorporating visualization techniques. In half an hour, it can wash away your cares. A soothing voice invites punters to envisage themselves in a stress-free environment, such as a tropical beach. This form of meditainment is like getting lost in a really good book or radio program. It takes all of 10 minutes for punters to achieve a really clear, calm state of mind. One participant entered the space with a mind full of stress. The planetarium guided meditation dissipated all of her tension. It was a really profound experience for her. So if you are suffering from the ravages of stress, now you can attack it from both ends. Pick up a hammer and belt it to bits or drift away from it peacefully into the starry night sky. Some experts are warning of the consequences of global warming on the environment. How will the world eat if it's too hot and dry to grow food? Well, now it's possible to grow lettuce in the desert. Could this technique be the saving grace of the human race? Kuwait is a very harsh environment. Almost no flora grows naturally, and it's not uncommon for temperatures to soar to a broiling 60 degrees. But thanks to a Kuwaiti farmer and an agricultural expert from Australia, vegetables are springing forth from the barren terrain year round. A special hydroponic method allows plants to withstand extremely high temperatures. This is great news for Kuwait, which imports most of its produce. Lettuce, basil, parsley and other herbs are carefully tended by 12 workers on the 2,000 square metre farm. The secret to dinner table success is in these greenhouses. They've been designed to block out the sun's radiation. A special shield reflects 50% of the sun's rays, protecting the plants from excess heat. The temperature is a good 10 degrees cooler in these protected climate zones, thanks to the shields, but not quite cool enough. The plants need an environment in the high 20s to low 30s. 
This is achieved by creating fake humidity. The plants sit in soilless containers and nutrient-enhanced water flows over their roots. The water is collected in a tank and pumped back over the roots time and time again, creating humidity along the way. This is a wise use of a precious resource in a desert environment. The plants make it from the greenhouse to the stores in about three hours, so their vitamin and mineral contents would still be at optimum levels by the time they are purchased and eaten. What makes these plants extra healthy is the fact that they've been grown in a bug-free environment, so they haven't needed to be sprayed with pesticides. Let's hope the world's climate doesn't deteriorate to such an extent that greenhouses like this are needed to ensure human survival. But it's nice to know the option for year-round clean green sustenance is available. Lettuce in the desert. What next? Mangoes in the snow? So, you having a nice time? Can you keep a cigarette? Bill Murray and Whoopi Goldberg may not know it yet, but they're helping to save people's lives on a daily basis. Get out of this bar, then the hotel, then the city, and then the country. Are you in or are you out? Watching a clip from a comedy flick could be just what the doctor ordered. In a recent study into cardiovascular disease, doctors subjected 20 healthy men and women around the age of 30 to a series of film clip screenings. The participants were non-smokers with normal blood pressure and glucose levels and no cholesterol problems. Before they were subjected to the viewings, they had their blood flow monitored by ultrasound. Each person was made to watch 15 minutes of comedy, in this case King Pin, and then their blood flow was tested again at 15 minute intervals after the viewing. 48 hours later, each person was subjected to a tragedy, in this case, Saving Private Ryan, and the same tests were performed. Man means nothing to me, it's just a It name. turns out that 95% of the participants had better blood flow after watching a comedy, and 70% had worse blood flow after watching a tragedy. Scientists were compelled to do the study after an earlier experiment proved to them that people with senses of humour had fewer heart problems. They subjected people to various embarrassing situations. There was more incidence of heart disease in people who reacted with anger than those who made light of the situation and shrugged it off. Fifteen minutes of laughter a day is all it takes to live a longer life. Coffee, an age-old brew that's taken the modern world by storm. The smell of freshly ground beans is enough to start anyone off on the right foot for the day. But experts are at loggerheads as to the do's and don'ts of this stimulating beverage. An uplifting breakfast drink or a poisonous cocktail in a mug? It's up to you to decide. Coffee has been a positive and sacred part of Ethiopian culture since anyone can remember. Here, there is no such thing as a quick cup of coffee. The Ethiopian coffee making ritual takes a couple of hours, so there's plenty of time for a chat about local goings on. The beans are roasted and offered around for the visitors to smell. Then they're lovingly ground in a mortar and pestle in preparation for the traditional brew. Senate Halu was taught the intricacies of the coffee ceremony by her grandmother and is already passing it on to her children. It's an important part of their social and economic culture. Legend has it that the coffee bean originated here in Ethiopia. 
a goat herder noticed his goats frolicking about more than usual after sampling the red berries. The tradition of coffee drinking was born. Some recent studies have touted the beans as beneficial and nutritious to humans. Research suggests that Parkinson's and Alzheimer's can be kept away with a few cups a day. And three cups is the magic number to keep the bronchioles open in ailing asthmatics. For those of you who really like to get into a good cup of java, drinking seven a day may save you from the risk of diabetes type 2. And there's hope for the vein amongst us. Coffee is loaded with some unique antioxidants. We all know that coffee clears our minds and helps us get on with the job. Now scientific research has proven that coffee improves your short-term memory and cognitive function. And of course, you won't be falling asleep on the job with a good cup of java. Alertness is what those bouncing beans are most famous for. If you're more brawny than brainy, then coffee still has something in store for you. Caffeine can enhance your stamina and endurance levels. It even helps you to cut up your muscles when you're pumping iron. The Russians have been in the grip of coffee fever for a short time and already they're setting records in the coffee drinking arena. This is the largest cappuccino Russia has ever seen. 70 litres of steamy milk and 30 litres of Italian espresso were lovingly prepared and mixed to the perfect blend. Imagine the aroma of 100 litres of top quality java. Of course, it took an Italian to be the judge of Russia's attempt at the classic Italian beverage. According to this barista, the brew was super. The world record for the largest cappuccino ever made belongs to the land of pizza and pasta. A massive 1500 litre cappuccino was mixed and enjoyed in Italy where the record is still held. Russia's ode to the classic drink was in aid of the 100 year anniversary of that all important piece of coffee culture, the modern espresso machine. Cafes and cafe society have been taking off in Russia recently with new places to go and exotic coffee flavours to try. And this can only be a good thing, right? Think of all those coffee health benefits. But for every health practitioner touting the benefits of the bean, there's another biting his nails in trepidation. Coffee is an addictive stimulant. It is a drug, you can't argue with that. It increases the heart rate and the blood pressure. It causes anxiety and shaking in some. Coffee doesn't let you sleep as well as you might. And how does the tasty little beverage do all of this? Caffeine is the culprit. It strikes the central nervous system, which sends a message to your adrenal glands to start producing that jittery stress hormone, adrenaline. Adrenaline triggers off the flight or fight instinct in your body. It sends most of your blood out to the muscles in your limbs and releases a large dose of glucose energy into your bloodstream. This is mistaken by some to be a positive energy boost. But in reality, this physiological reaction is ordinarily used by the body when danger is imminent. Just say you're out in the forest and you're about to be eaten by a bear. Adrenaline gives you the focus to assess the situation quickly and accurately and the stamina to run as fast as you can, hopefully in the right direction. So it's not the coffee that's giving you superhuman concentration, focus and stamina. It's the misuse of your own adrenaline. In short, people are drinking prefabricated stress every day and calling it their morning cup of coffee. When the adrenaline gland is continually activated on a daily basis, anxiety, depression, irritability and in some cases panic attacks ensue, all leading to one frazzled little gland. Naturopathy and traditional Chinese medicine can rebalance your system. Some experts call caffeine an anti-nutrient. It hampers the absorption of essential minerals and vitamins in the body. Iron, potassium, magnesium, zinc and the B-group vitamins are all put at risk. 
Just say you ate a huge juicy steak and washed it down with a nice cup of coffee. You'd effectively cut your iron absorption down by 40%. If this isn't worrisome enough, scientists have identified a nasty little chemical in coffee that may be carcinogenic. Called acrylamide, it's also found in French fries and potato chips. But wait, that's not all. Indigestion, heartburn, severe premenstrual tension, infertility and increased risk of osteoporosis in postmenopausal women are also dangers linked with caffeine consumption. So one man's poison is another man's short black. Is the latte a loaded and lethal concoction or is a cup of coffee a warm pick-me-up to get you through the day? It's up to you to decide whether the cup is half empty or the cup is half full. Compared to a hundred years ago, eating habits in Western society have taken a turn for the worse. The world's current battle with the bulge is not only attributed to the vast variety of fast foods on the menu, but the way we are eating is making us fatter. Gone are the days of all the family sitting around the dinner table and sharing a meal. Many people come home after a hard day's work, park themselves in front of the TV and proceed to chow down. Warning, warning, this is the way to certain weight gain. Studies have proven that eating and watching your favourite sitcom at the same time is a recipe for portion distortion. People fail to recognise the crucial feeling of fullness if they eat and stare catatonically at the same time. Not only is weight a concern, but eating in front of the tube also increases the hours of TV you're watching. A group of people in Australia have created a unique urban eating experience for themselves. The baking group at Ceres Environmental Park meet once a month to bake and feast communally. An experience not often enjoyed by city dwellers. The group made their own earth oven a few years back. A wood fire affair that would be more at home in a tribal village than a city park. People in the group are free to bring things prepared from wholesome ingredients at home. But today, a baker is cooking everyone's favourite treat, wood-fired pizza. So what's the difference between eating pizza at home in front of the telly and eating pizza here amongst the chatter and laughter of family and friends? Well, if the French can eat foods high in fat and stay slim and healthy, anyone can do it. It seems taking your time over lunch to chat and socialise keeps excess weight at bay. It's called the French paradox. Socialising makes you pause between mouthfuls to talk. Before you have the chance to overeat, chemicals from your brain have time to flood through your body, telling you you've had enough. You may be able to eat half a pizza to yourself at home in front of the TV, but in a social situation, you may be surprised to find that two slices is enough. Take a leaf out of the series Baking Group's book. Create a warm and meaningful community experience around the food you eat. Beat the fat with a friendly chat. Far from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, martial arts students sweat it out in this modest little Thai gym. They're here to learn the fighting style of one of the world's most celebrated martial artists. Amid the dilapidated ping pong tables and bare surrounds, the students sweat for their art in the non-air conditioned room. This is Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee style. This is one of the last places in the world where students can learn the unique fighting style developed by the Hollywood legend. Teacher Mark Stewart is one of only 100 teachers in the world that can trace their lineage directly to Lee. 
Stewart's teacher Ted Wong studied directly under Lee from 67 until Lee's death in 73. He's one of only two people certified by Lee to teach Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do means way of the intercepting fist. Not many people know that aside from being a screen sensation for most of his adult life, Lee also developed this martial arts technique. Known as the dragon throughout his life, Lee studied a number of martial arts techniques but found them all too complicated and elaborate. He usually performed Kung Fu in films such as Fists of Fury and Enter the Dragon. But in his final years, he wanted something simple and direct that would be effective in a real self-defense situation. Unfortunately, Lee died prematurely in 1973 and his teaching style has been hijacked and corrupted by many so-called teachers around the world. Wong estimated that about 1% of purported Jeet Kune Doists are actually teaching the way in its original form. Jeet Kune Do is often described as a fusion of Western-style fencing and boxing with Chinese Kung Fu. Stewart quotes Lee saying, unless there is a being with more than two arms and two legs, then there is only one style of fighting, the human style. Students of Jeet Kune Do practice seven hours a week, shadow boxing, honing their blocks and punches, and learning Lee's signature move, the high kick. But students are quick to play down the superstar connection. For them, Lee's film star status rates second to his wise philosophies and practical technique. Martial arts are an excellent way to keep healthy for people of all ages. Not only do they keep you physically toned and cardiovascularly fit, they help to maintain the correct balance between the yin and yang energies in the body. If you're looking for a sea change in your exercise regime, you may get a kick out of Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee style. Join us again on Mind, Body and Soul as we discover more paths to health and happiness. But for now, Dominique gives us some food for thought. Many of us spend a lot of time feeling victimised, feeling disempowered, feeling small. This is not necessarily the most proactive, the most productive way to live your life. There is no event which is in itself stressful or traumatic, but rather it is our reaction to our life's events that causes stress and trauma internally. The next time something happens that doesn't quite go your way or that may seem a little bit stressful, try observing that event as separate from your internal space and observe the space in time between what happens to you and your reaction to what happens to you. This is the first step, becoming aware of that space. And as you become aware of that space between the event and your reaction, you have an opportunity to consciously decide how you're going to respond, how you're going to react to that scenario instead of just moving into it unconsciously.